The new kit has gone down very well with the QPR fans. You must be very pleased with that reaction. Really pleased with the reaction, really pleased with the kit. You, as always with um, any first-year kit order I've ever dealt with, with any club, no matter who the kit manufacturer was, there's always those um, those teething problems with getting kit in, um, you know, and that's been Puma, that's been um, that, that's been um, um, Joma. That's been there's been a number of, of people that, that I've, I've struggled with, and of course this year was was no exception. But having said that, I think they nailed it on the design, and when it got here, quite pleased with it. Um, having you know, but fans. <laughs> to be fair to them, they weren't exactly over demanding. They just said, "Can you make the hoops go all the way around?" Like, yeah, okay, let's, let's see if we can manage that one. <laughs> okay. Um, in terms of questions that have been sent into QPR business at QPR.co.uk, Mark Manning, what I don't understand is why QPR never make an effort to get fans in early before a game or provide some post-game entertainment to get them to stay longer. Surely, by encouraging fans to stay as long as possible, your takings per game will increase two or three times. On the, the, the post-match game, I think um, it's, it's difficult. A number of clubs have tried it, putting on the, the late get, the match in concourses. Most people have their rituals and they'll, they'll just want to go. Pre-game is a different story and we are trying to do things like fan zones to try to get people here. Um, you know, we're in the last year of a catering contract. Uh, you, you, you know, once, once that goes, we're talking to the caterers now about what can we do, better food offering, speedier service. You know, I think better if people thought, well, there's something to do here, there's a better food offering, then fine, I'd do it. Pre-match entertainment, always that balance between what can you do on the pitch versus two teams trying to warm up for a match on the pitch as well. So, and then there's also the cost element, you know. Um, how much earlier, if I get here, how many more people are going to come up versus bringing the stewards in an extra hour early when I'm already paying the police and the stewards about a million quid a year anyway. A question from Jack Caran. Are there any plans to move the location of the family stand in Loftus Road? It's a, a common one. This is, I've been asked this question a number of times here and um, it, it normally starts with an atmosphere. You know, it was much better atmosphere when the, when the family stand wasn't there. Um, although people do say, yes, it's important that we do have something for families. So the next obvious logical question is, well, then where would you put the family stand? Like, well, I don't know. Because you can't put them underneath the, the away stand because that's an awful place to, to, to put families. Everything else is, we have a pretty full um, allocation of season tickets. So where do you move a lot of people to having gone through that pain once? So it's um, in a new stadium, you could start from scratch. It's, it's, um, it's, it's dead easy. But I think now, um, I understand the issues and there was and the lack of consultation, the, or perceived lack of consultation anyway, because I wasn't here. I'm just, I'm just going by what I'm told of when it happened. But I think a family stand is important because we do need to concentrate on, on getting that next generation in, making sure that you know, 15, 20 years from now, we have people that are still supporting QPR. Question from Steve Guthrie. How about the new ground and training ground, especially the new ground? Nothing seems to move on except Car Giant are not going to budge. So they'll, will this mean no new ground? Well, I think if you look, just a couple of weeks ago, we got planning for, um, for Oakland's. Um, now, I know Car Giant were screaming after that about no new stadium, but quite frankly, they can have their opinion and I've got my planning permission, and I know out of two of those, which I'd rather have. So, for, you know, that's, that's one of the, 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 the pieces of enabling development we felt we needed to proceed with our master plan there, and we have it. So that's moving on. Every time I think we're getting close with, a, with a, the training ground, it moves a little bit further away. But uh, this looks like the last over the dice from the local residents who um, are opposing it, and I think it's only two of them. If, if I'm right, um, so, but I'll have to double check that. It's a very small group, but they are doing everything they can to hold this up. Their latest ploy is to submit this for judicial review. I'm guessing that's probably an eight, nine month pro process to, to, to get that through, I hope. Um, but that is literally, they lost on their footpath application. Um, they've really kind of lost everything they've done. I, I can appreciate they want to frustrate us as much as possible, but you know, if I doubt they listen to this, but if they are, and the letter will go out is, I'm not going to be deterred from this. We're going to keep going. We're not going to stop. We will get it over the line. So I don't know why you would you would do everything you can to frustrate and irritate, you know, a would-be neighbor when we're going to have to get all, all live together up there. But anyway, it's it's still going on. We'll still continue to to fight every issue that comes up, and um, I am absolutely bound to determine that we will get that one over the line. When you say eight or nine month process, do you mean effectively? 
the project is on hold now for nine months until that from judicial a, review. Yeah, from a risk management standpoint, we need to get the, the judicial review out of the way just in case they did win. Um, I don't think, I, you know, I feel very comfortable with our position there. I think we will. Um, but as soon as we can get that over the line, then I'm, I'm ready to go. Now, after that, there's, there's another probably nine month process of importation. If, you, if anybody's ever seen um, Orrin Farm, the, the pitch is slope, we need to actually import a lot of, of, um, of infill for that. It's estimated that's going to cost about nine months. Uh, we're still proceeding because that's a licensing issue. You have to be licensed to actually do that. The license for that, I think, will be completed pretty soon. So that is, a, you know, from, from a, um, a, com a, a starting standpoint, an actual physical being able to start, I think that's probably the last physical thing we need to do before we actually get started on it. Otherwise, we're just waiting for that last piece of judicial review to, to, to wind its way through, and then um, and then we're ready to go. So just so I'm clear, and my understanding from most QPR fans is once they see the work is starting, they'll be quite happy. So even if it is a so, not, not, so, yeah. so even if it is a nine month process of the the landfill, as yeah. you say, they'll be quite happy that it's moving. But in terms of the time scale, that couldn't commence for eight to nine months. That initial process of landfill. It could physically happen. However, you assume a big, big risk, which is they did win, and you started to do that. You then have to pay to remediate and, and take that back to how it was, and that is, you, you know, there's there's um, there's logical risk and there's illogical risk, and for me that would be an illogical risk. Okay, and uh, next question is from Anthony Watts. I believe that I'm still a minority shareholder from the public offering years ago. However, I've not seen any accounts or AGM notices. Please, can you let me know why this is? Oh, AGMs, I think, um, were club. Uh, th there was a, a, resp a, a law at least two years ago, because I remember this one when I was at Burnley, where well, you weren't required to have AGMs anymore. Um, so I, even at Burnley, we hadn't, I, I haven't recorded an AGM. They did have like a, um, I think a shareholders get together once, and that was about it. Um, in terms of the accounts, they're 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 published, so they're they're easy enough to get on. But um, in terms of of, of shareholders, um, you know, just a lot of um, added expense that we had for for shareholder meetings that really didn't uh, amount to anything. So it was for, I know at Burnley we took the decision the money was better spent in trying to put things on the pitch rather than have have shareholders meetings.